she was already carrying all the follicles or the seeds of every egg. And then when no fertilization occurs, and this beautiful, you can call it a skin, there are really moments when she lies in bed and she just says like, I'm not gonna cook, I'm not gonna do anything. Honestly, I don't have a story. <laughs> Pretty straightforward. I don't have a story, first of all, because I never experienced the menstruation. Secondly, because we don't hear stories. When I grew up, well, I'm still growing up, but when I grew up, I never heard any story. Not one. I saw my sisters having a hard time. I saw my mother and my sisters in pain. I saw them talking about it, but they never spoke to me straight away. So if there's this taboo, if there's no conversation between women sometimes, then imagine the conversations that men are having. And because those conversations weren't there, there was this magic around it. It was like, what was it? What was happening? What were they talking about? <laughs> and I have to be honest that it's only since a few years that I've really been, been aware of what is actually happening. And I can't help myself but seeing this relationship between menstruation and between death. Why? Because we don't talk about either of them. It's, it's something... It's uncomfortable, it's not really a party bringer, yet it's there. And every time I see menstruation, now with my partner, who's also a mother, and who's very connected to her menstruation, every single time, it's a small death. It's a small death when she starts bleeding. All the way back from the moment we were born from the first woman, she was already carrying all the follicles or the seeds of every egg that will ever become a human. And now, every you know, every month, so to say, generally, one of those one of those eggs dies. And there will be a moment in which there will be no more eggs in which there will be no opportunity for birth in our, you know, in our physical way at least anymore. So, the celebrations of it are so crucial. I think it has to be celebrated. Why? Because it's such a beautiful experience. If I see my, my wife going through it, it's really a cycle of life. And she has taught me so much about it. For example, how she started was that first she looked at her menstruation as it was. But now she says that she looks at her fertility instead of her menstruation. Menstruation is, you know, the final chapter of her fertility. So instead of focusing when her menstruation is and focusing on, you know, when will I start bleeding? How do I want to deal with bleeding? Now she focuses on when am I fertile? When can I feel that this little egg pops up and is ready to be fertilized? And then when no fertilization occurs, and this beautiful, you can call it the skin, you know, in the, in the womb, feels that, okay guys, it's not gonna happen today. And they let go, and we start bleeding. Then it becomes such a different thing. First, what I thought was like, oh God, like it looks like they're, <laughs> they're suffering, they're in pain, something's happening, can we help them? And now when my, my wife starts bleeding, she's happy. It's as if there's a relief and there's this release of blood. The moment before starting to bleed is, you know, is actually the heart moment in which as a man, I can be there for her, quite practically. 
there are really moments when she lies in bed and she just says like, I'm not gonna cook, I'm not gonna do anything. At this moment, I need support. I need help, not just with practicalities, but also with raising a four-year-old, also with anything that needs to be done and the emotional support. But as men, where do, where do we learn this? I don't know. I don't know. And if I, w if I could uh, make a wish, then I would wish that my mother would have been my first teacher. Because then she could teach me from the moment I could walk. And then she could show me how natural it was, how normal it was. And how beautiful it was in the way just as death is beautiful. If I would have been raised in that way, it would have, it would have been much easier for me to understand it. And at the same time, it would have been much easier to be there for the women, not only my partner, but for the women who are bleeding. In many, uh, in many cultures and ceremonies, there's the idea of separation while a woman is bleeding. And since I was 11 years old, I, um, every month, I went into a sweat lodge held by my grandparents. And we always asked women whether they were about to have their period or not. And if they were, we asked them not to come into the sweat lodge. Of course, this can be interpreted in, in a lot of ways. But the main reason behind it is that why would you need a ceremony for purification if you're already natural in that sacred space, why would we try and overdo something that is actually just asking to be held, to be seen by those you love, by your community, in a way, even by your country, ideally? And that that community can just be there to hold you. Imagine that you're born, you're a young girl, you have your first period. And when you have your first period, there's a moment created in which your neighbors come, in which your family comes, and they celebrate that from this moment on, you can give life. You can really give life. And imagine that our sons and our brothers, our nephews, our grandsons, that they can stand there and that they can celebrate for their friends and for their women, their mothers, their grandmothers, and that they can learn. That they can learn to just be there, to just stand there. And it's the same with death. It's nothing to be solved. It's nothing to be, um, it's, in a way, it doesn't even need to be a discussion. It just needs to be observed and needs to be listened to. And at the same time, while that celebration is happening, there is space for death and grief at the table. Because at the same time, they are grieving. There's so much happening for them inside of their bodies that <laughs> for us as men, it's like, it is a myth. Not in the myth of something that is not true, but in the myth of creation, in the myth of what makes us human. And that is this one of the most beautiful things that, um, yeah, that I've seen until now when it comes to menstruation. And in that way, there are not many stories that I can tell, but I would love to sit there I would list, love to listen to the stories of women. Just like I'm very happy that I can listen to the stories of my wife, that I can understand it. Why? Because if we as men would be able to hold that space, then I believe that not only a taboo um, will come out in our society, but also we can really see feminism as it is. And I can just be one tiny seed of how we could stand in relationship on any topic that will come towards us.
whether that is our beliefs, whether that is death, whether that is any challenge. So I hope that at that time we can all gather together, sit around the table and have a good feast. <laughs>